Pater che pedi in spiritu sancti. Amen. For today we have the feast of St. Francis Borgia, uh, one of the um, uh, most illustrious of that uh, noble family. Uh, entered, he was a, um, became the Jesuit superior general, a great diplomat, and a mystic as well. Uh, St. Francis Borgia was born in the year 1510 uh, to a family of high nobility. His father was uh, the Duke of the Empire. Uh, he was a very pious young child and wanted to become a monk. But rather than being sent to a monastery, he was sent into the court of the Holy Roman Emperor, Charles V, uh, due to his very many family ties. And so, uh, again, instead of, instead of being a monk, he was married, 19 years old, uh, married a woman of noble estate, and together they had eight children. Uh, but it was a very good marriage. He was a, a, good, a good man, a good husband, a good father, um, a, good, a good diplomat. And um, in fact, he was actually very good at music. This is one of the things that I guess um, prior to Palestrina, St. Francis Borgia was also composing um, uh, music in that uh, polyphonic style. But he have, uh, would have accompanied the emperor on several affairs of state and eventually was given uh, the task of accompanying the body of Queen Isabella to her burial place. And this was, um, actually this would be the cause of his total conversion to Christ. Um, Queen Isabella of Spain was, was very uh, renowned for her, uh, of course, her greatness, but also her beauty. Uh, but when um, uh, Francis Borgia is accompanying, right, her body to the place of burial, because it's, it's got this great retinue, when he arrives, uh, the custom is to open the casket and examine the body and see, is that really, you know, uh, the, the person? And it had only been a few days, but already uh, the decay of death had taken its toll. And this once beautiful empress was um, uh, decaying. Uh, the stench of, of uh, the corpse was emanated. And that left a huge Im, uh, impact on Francis Borgia. Uh, he he had, had spent his whole youth, right, growing up in that court around the, uh, the emperor, the queen, um, the royalty, and yet he saw this is the result. The lowest peasant and the highest queen, they both have the same end. So what's the purpose of this life, right? The purpose of, the, of this life cannot be in this life, but it has to be in the next. And so that, that just filled him with resolve that um, only heaven would be his goal from this point forward. And this was, um, uh, this would, this would, uh, he, would, he would keep this, right? He was still married, he still had children, uh, but in, following this resolve, he began to study, um, he, he turned more towards philosophy, towards theology, towards contemplation, and so on. And that would um, actually uh, turn out to be God's plan because his wife would die a short time after this. Um, he, was, he was still a young man. He still had uh, many children. Uh, but once his wife died, he decided he was going to give entirely his life to Christ. And so he did. Um, he um, um, gave up his title. He renounced the title of Duke, which was actually like uh, a Duke is, is quite close in terms of the, the emperor. It's, it's like one of those in line for the throne type of thing. But he renounced that title, uh, bestowed it upon his oldest son, and um, took made... Um, uh, provisions for all of his uh, children and renounced his title and nobility and then he joined the Jesuits, the newly formed Jesuit order. Um, uh, complete renunciation. Now this, this came as, as quite the shock <clears throat> uh, to the uh, Borgia family because these, this is the Borgias, the infamous Borgias uh, that were always making power plays in Italy, right? Uh, what Alexander the Sixth was um, one of his um, great great grandfathers, the, the, the Pope, right? He had this his grandson. Um, Caesar Borgia was the one who was like, you know, cutting throats and bribing people and murdering cardinals and making, you know, 13 year old nephews cardinals, that kind of thing. So, um, in fact, um, his relative, Caesar Borgia, that's the, the person about whom Machiavelli wrote his book, The Prince. He wrote that to Caesar Borgia. So, this is the family that Francis Borgia belonged to. Uh, but that's just proof, right? That's proof that God can raise up saints from anywhere, in any place, even in the most, uh, we could say, toxic of family environments. Um, people, you know, we hear of um, generational spirits, where a person is like, oh, my great-grandfather was a mason, or my mother or father was in Wicca, or whatever it may be. 
and they think that somehow that their, their, their um, sanctity is denied to them. That's not the case, right? Caesar Borgia is proof of that. How many generational spirits were in his family, right, with, with, with murders and intrigues and a pope who, who was um, uh, naming his illegitimate children cardinals and giving them benefices, right? That, that was Caesar, that was Francis Borgia's family, right? You, you, you think the mafia in Chicago is bad? Try Italy, right, in, in, in the 1600s. So, um, uh, so that is just proof, right? It, we, we don't need to worry about what has happened in the past, our family history, whatever it is. Live a good life right now, right? Uh, respond to God's grace right now. That is what uh, St. Francis Borgia did. He saw that. He saw Isabella of Spain in her coffin, saw the rot, saw the decay of death. And it's like, if this is the wages of death, um, uh, if this is the wages of sin, what must sin itself be, right? And he resolved to change his life. So, as I mentioned, he, he, um, he joined the Jesuits, uh, and he led the simple and humble life of a priest. He no longer allowed himself to be called by any royal title. He refused the ecclesiastical dignities offered to him. The, the popes wanted to make him cardinal. He refused. Um, <clears throat> his leadership skills are recognized, and um, after St. Francis, or um, after St. Ignatius of Loyola, he became the, um, the third superior general of the Jesuits, eventually. And he was instrumental in uh, assigning Jesuits to foreign missions. He founded the Gregorian University in Rome, uh, 12 other colleges throughout Europe. He expanded the Jesuits greatly and advised kings and prelates in the highest matters of state and importance. And yet despite all this, this, this incredible work, he would spend hours and hours and hours every day in prayer. Uh, if he could, sometimes he'd spend eight or even 10 hours in prayer. He ate very uh, little food, very rough food. He wore a hair shirt to use a discipline. He slept very little. Uh, he used to go around and beg from houses for food uh, to increase his humility. He endured insults with serenity and patience, uh, volunteered in hospitals to assist the sick and the dying, and he spent uh, time cleaning and sweeping and doing the menial tasks of servants. Right, despite all of his, his uh, you know, advising kings and prelates, and he goes and he sweeps the floor, right? That, that's humility, that's following Christ. And this way of life was inspirational to um, many others, in fact. Uh, so uh, Pope Pius V says that he was inspired by the life of Francis Borgia. Furthermore, Charles Borromeo also said he was very inspired by the example of uh, Francis Borgia. And even more, uh, the, the, the emperor, Charles V, uh, whose wife, Isabella of Spain, uh, um, that, that, that Francis had accompanied and buried, Charles V, in his old age, uh, renounced the throne. He spent the last two years of his life in, in penance, and he said that Francis Borgia was his inspiration. Uh, so what a legacy, what an example. Uh, and furthermore, actually, as if that wasn't enough, um, Teresa of Avila, as we know, the great Carmelite mystic, uh, she would write in, in her writings, she, in, in, in speaking about the highest levels of contemplative prayer and of mystical marriage, she often says, oh, I know a man who experiences these visions and ecstasies frequently, and it's St. Francis Borgia that she's talking about, that he, he was in the sixth, the seventh mansion of prayer, that mystical marriage with her Lord. So uh, he continued uh, to great effect uh, that this good at every level and eventually uh, would, be, would end up becoming quite worn out from his labors, uh, became very sick. And upon recovering from this illness, he was around 60 years old, uh, Pope Pius V gave him the mission, uh, go uh, gain the support of uh, Spain and Portugal in forming the Holy League. Uh, this is before the Battle of Lepanto, right? The Turks were mounting and the Pope needed um, uh, that cooperation. So he sends uh, Francis Borgia on this mission to Spain and Portugal. Uh, he was not in very good health, but he uh, went anyway, and he was successful, but um, uh, th this mission would, would wear him out. And so the strains of travel uh, were too great, and he died uh, shortly after in the year 1572 at 61 years of age. Uh, so St. Francis Borgia has been called the most striking example of a conversion of life since the Renaissance. And uh, this was accomplished, as I mentioned, through meditation on the reality and the inevitability of death, right? Uh, the, the wages of sin is death, and uh, if that is how horrible sin is, what must we do to avoid it, right? And if, that, if the end of all flesh is in death, uh, what point is riches, wealth, and honor, and power, and prestige, and so on? Right? Only the next life is going to matter. 
And that, that's not something that, that, that the firmness that obviously St. Francis Borgia was, was filled, that conviction, that is not something that we can produce on our own. Uh, that is going to be a great grace of God that he gives because we have spent our lives in pursuit of virtue and the things in front of us, right? St. Francis Borgia, he was a, a, a good child, he, he, um, a good young man, he uh, spent his time well, he was in a good marriage, he did all those things in front of him very well, he constantly meditated upon Christ, and then that was the, that was the result, that was the reward, was that conversion of heart, that total conversion of heart into sanctity. And so that's really what we, what we can be asking for, is, is if we would like to become a great saint, which all of us can be, right? Great in terms of, uh, not, not in terms of what St. Francis Borgia did, but great in terms of God. Like God has great plans for everybody, whether um, large or small, visible or invisible in this world, but God has great plans for us. How are we going to accomplish those plans? By doing little things right now, right? The little things God has in, in right in front of us. That's how we will ar arrive at whatever God may have for us. And who knows, right? Who knows which one of us out there is a St. Francis Borgia, right? Who could become a, a priest? Doesn't matter if you're married and have kids. Who knows, right? <laughs> that was St. Francis Borgia as well. Uh, so let us ask for his intercession in realizing uh, that it's not in this life, what is in this life that matters, but in the next. And for that, that complete conversion of heart that comes about through fidelity to God's grace and his will. God bless you all in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen.